Hello, welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. This is episode 57. And as you can see, I have changed my environment a little bit. So I am still in Maine. I'm just not in Northern Maine. I had high hopes to uh, do the show from a sheep pasture um, as I'm down at my parents, but it is, well, it's hot for me. It's hot and humid. And so I decided to stay in the cool shade of the trees. Um, where I can see my wonderful dogs and not have to tote all of my gear down to the pasture. But I will be down there fairly soon as I am getting four new lambs, um, hopefully uh, in the next week or two. So that is if we can fit them into my Subaru. I have a wagon. I'm hopeful. So we'll see. So... Welcome! Thank you for joining me. I kind of tangented a little bit there about my in my landscape, but uh, I'm so happy that you have returned or you are taking on a show uh, for a test drive. I hope that what you find here is enriching and um, offers you some thought, reflection, inspiration. It certainly is a community that does that for me, and I appreciate everyone who reaches out via Instagram or email. I don't always respond to emails. I do read all of them. It's the same in the threads. I don't always respond. I do read them all and, uh, and find a real source of connection and, um, as I said before, inspiration and opportunity for reflection through all of those interactions. So thank you so much for taking the time to give me that feedback. Um, on this edition of Fiber Trek, we are going to talk about works in progress. We are going to talk about a finished object. We also are going to look at some acquisitions and discoveries. Hopefully, Wool Heroes and Heroines. Depends on how much oomph I have left for editing. And a couple announcements and events. So uh, stay tuned. I guess you don't have to stay tuned because it's kind of already here and happening. I'm trying to just watch my light a little bit in there. Uh, I do have the sun behind me, but we'll see what happens. On this edition of Fiber Trek, we will talk about works in progress. We will talk about finished objects, events and announcements, acquisition and discoveries. Hopefully, we'll heroes and heroines, depending on how up to snuff my editing skills are. <laughs> and uh, it's a little late in the day, but I think I can do it. And yeah, let's just jump right in, shall we? I think first things first, so important. I've been wanting to podcast and tell you about a project I've been working on, and I just um, am finally, obviously, making the time. But lots of stuff has been brewing in the background for me, lots of projects, lots of sidetrack um, kind of uh, fleece endeavors. And one of the things that was important to me was to collaborate with a group of um, friends and talk about... A, a, our connection to sheep and a deeper exploration of our craft. So I am teamed up with Emily of Fibertown, Claire of New Hampshire Knits, and Sarah of Yarns at Yinhu. Three fantastic, informative, uh, funny podcasts, which I'm pretty sure you're already subscribed to if you're watching this one. I've teamed up with them and we've put together a four part series that is chronological. It has, it, it kind of works from the sheep to the shawl, if you will. And I thought it would be best to really just re directly read from what Sarah Bjorn's in who was able to articulate in words that um, I wasn't able to. So let me share, share with you the project. Um, this is a four part series starting the week of September 18th. So it starts this week with Claire of New Hampshire Knits and it continues each week for four weeks. Um, it will go from Claire to myself to Emily and to Yarns at Yinhu just before Rhinebeck. And at Rhinebeck, this is a little bit, you know, uh, this is a little on the fly piece that we kind of added in. At Rhinebeck, we hope to purchase a fleece um, and using the information we've gleaned from each other, yourselves, along the way, we hope to. Um, include you in the process of moving that fleece from some sort of raw product to finished product, mostly yarn, um, dyed yarns. And looking at the way each spinner, um, preparer, sorry, I'm like trying to walk out the sun, 
preparer has gone about dealing with the fleece. And, um, and just to show you how different, right, that craft can be. Let me see if I adjust myself just a little bit. I'm trying to keep it somewhat interesting with the background, but I might be able to rotate. Let's see if I can do All that. All right, so I have repositioned myself. Hopefully there was some good editing, ninja editing skills happening there. I was talking about fleece wise um, and our hope to purchase a fleece and show you how diverse we can approach um, our medium, right? I talk, about, I talk about that a lot, this concept of our medium, it's what really drives my craft, um, what I want to work with um, as far as um, breed or what is going to create its history, its connection to land. I'm not always product driven. And I'm certainly not color driven, although I do like color. Uh, a lot of times for me, it's um, going to be about capturing some landscape, some ad some adventure, something um, within the yarn that I can't I can't do it physically. Like I can't be in, in you know, I can't be skiing in Nor Norway right now, or I can't be on North Ronald Z in Orkney right now. But I can knit, I can connect that space, um, and I just think that's a really powerful element uh, that sheep provide to us with their wool. So anyway, I digress. Um, this is what Sarah Pomegranate had to say about this project. If you have felt, as I did, that the fleece tent at a fiber festival is overwhelming and intimidating, if you've been considering a fleece purchase, if you have unprocessed fleece languishing in storage, if you're experienced in fleece processing, you're invited to participate in, this dis in the discussion threads, ask questions, and share ideas. Podcast hosts will be facilitating discussion threads and awarding prizes for engaging in discussion. So there are threads on each of the podcasts. Um, like, I, like she says in her introduction, this really is for anybody. It's for knitters um, wanting to learn more about uh, yarn construction. Um, it's for spinners just wanting to watch a process unfold um, or see adventure happening that they can incorporate into their own knitting. Excuse me. So um, it's kind of like facilitating a forum um, through process. So the podcasters involved in FleeceWise, um, as aforementioned, New Hampshire Knits, Emily of Fibertown, Claire of New Hampshire Knits, Emily of Fibertown, Sarah of Yarns at Yinhu, have unique experiences, practical information, suggestions, and stories to share, as well as interviews with fleece producers. We hope that there will be something for everyone in the series. So the components of each of these episodes will include kind of a practical application piece, but will also include um, personal narratives. I kind of given a little bit away about mine as I was talking about adventure trekking, wool trekking, knit trekking through uh, Norway. So. I think that there will be a real personable element to this as well as a kind of a technical element to it. I hope you join us. Each of the episodes will be titled Fleecewise, so you'll be able to follow along um, which podcast episode is following up. So I will be taking care of next week, and I'll talk a little bit more about an event I'm attending this week that I hope to incorporate um, into that series. So that's Fleecewise. Do come and join us. Let's see, I'm gonna go into works in progress. I have some, I have a very cool um, piece to talk about and I really wanted to launch with that, but I am going to refrain myself and uh, get through some of the knitting first um, because there could be a little bit of gushing involved. So, I am still working on Love and Lemons by Melanie Berg. Yeah, Melanie Berg. This is Quince and Company, their Piper yarn, which is a mohair merino. Um, it's Texas mohair and um, American merino. And it's a lace weight, and it's a, it's a fun yarn to work with. I am, I'm enjoying it, and I like this pattern. And so I wanted, I wanted this product, so that's why I kind of bought the yarn to go with it. Um, because I knew that it would perform in a certain way, uh, and it is. And so, love and lemons, easy peasy, you could memorize it, and off you go. Um, it's definitely not, um, it's definitely not, you know, put down everything and hold the pattern in front of you knitting. 
The other thing I'm working on is Ceri, which is by Linnea Ullman. And this is out of Hampton Fiber Mill. Flat Island fleece. So it was raised in Maine and spun in Vermont. And this is Ceri. It's got some gorgeous texture in the yoke, which was what really attracted me to it, as well as course the color and the fact that the original was knit in Gotland and I had some Gotland I was going to use for this but I opted to try something different um, I opted for this flat island um, but um, I'm just about to I split for the sleeves and I'll show you that but it is a cardigan so trying to focus on me too and I am knitting it as a cardigan I know I had that whole song and dance about cardigans didn't I I don't know if you remember it, but. I'm knitting this uh, a little bit, I think, denser gauge, and that was to kind of compensate for some of the loft in the yarn um, so that I didn't quite get as much pilling. I just like this, I love the smell of it. You see some of the texture there. I, I've split. I had to remember when I was knitting this that there is going to be like a one and a half inch neck band because I was like, oh my God, you know, this isn't going to work. Um, but it's actually going to end up being lower. So that made me feel so much better. Um, and the same goes for the front, right? So you're going to gain an inch to two inches because of your, your ribbing bands. So this is in my matter root um, bag. She's got some pretty awesome patterns and I just love this kind of um, rustic linen or cotton blend. So um, she is going to be at the Common Ground Fair, which is where I am going this weekend. I'll talk a little bit about that in events. And I've also cast on last weekend both of these sweaters are kind of my Rhinebeck goals. Um, at the moment, I think I'm going to end up maybe with just one. But uh, this is the Nash Island sweater by Mary Jane Mucklestone. And it is knit out of Nash Island Light in the colorways Lichen and Buoy. I'm looking at a drop stitch, so I'm just going to pick that up. So Lichen and Buoy and Driftwood. And it has an all-over lace pattern. It is this I'm knitting in the round. The original pattern was um, designed, I think I have it in here. Nope. The original pattern was designed, uh, it was worked flat and seamed. It has a Portuguese kind of um, uh, neck, so it's laced actually. and. I'm going to see if I can bring it up for you. I'm changing that up a little bit. I am going to do uh, a placket, almost like a Henley or a River Driver shirt, if you're familiar with that. So here it is. Oh, I'm like, what happened by Mary Jane Mucklestone? Nash Island Light. And I love working with this yarn. It goes, it knits up really fast, and I am ready to split for the body. So I will be working flat. This is the first time I've ever worked color work flat. <clears throat> so you knit in the round to the armpits, and then you split, knit, 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 join the shoulders, and then pick up the um, arms and knit down. The beauty of knitting your arms down in kind of a traditional way is that if there are parts and elements of the sweater that aren't getting worn out, then you can rip your arms back and re and re knit them down. And I think gansies are traditionally knit in that way. They're constructed in a way that enable you to really continue the or have longevity within the garment. So um, that's how this um, this particular pattern that I'm doing um, has been worked. So I'm not sure how it's done in the. I think in the original pattern the sleeves are worked separate and then seamed in. I could be wrong, but. So anyway, I've made a few modifications just to make this a little bit um, more familiar knit. 
um, because I have not knit color working around. So seeing as only part of it is knit flat and color work um, doesn't quite feel as maybe intimidating as the whole garment. I did see on Fruity Knitting, she was knitting a Marie Wallen um, garment, which was all pieced. It's a um, knit in each piece with intarsia and fair isle or um, stranded knitting uh, knit um, on the reverse side, which was very foreign to me. Um, but I love the sweater so much I was thinking of trying it. So this is kind of a gateway of working with those techniques um, in a very different um, setting. Different setting. Different skill. The other thing that I have on the needles, which I have made progress on and continue to pick up, is my personal Shackleton. I won't be talking about Shackleton per se this week. We won't have a Shackleton segment. Um, but um, I designed this yarn with Janie Estelle of Starcroft out of some gray flat island fleece. Um, to knit Kate Davies Frosted Midnight. And here it is. It's coming along. This is the body. And I don't know how many inches I have left to go. But I just pick it up and knit. I love this yarn. I love this project. It's. I am not working on a product per se. I'm working on a journey. So that kind of alleviates some of that driving progress, momentum, stress that I can sometimes get um, when I have so many things I want to work on. This, um, yeah, so if you're not familiar with this particular um, pattern, it has a beaded yoke. They look like trees. It's, um, this is, I would call a light fingering weight, and um, the original was in a 50-50 silk. Uh, wool blend. This is a 5% silk, 95% um, wool. And I really like the way that it's turning out. It, it's not, I said this before, um, it, it's kind of a cottagey spun yarn, so it doesn't have that commercial feel, but I do think it retains the uh, sophisticated look that, that the original sweater had. Um, and that's what I wanted to have. I wanted to have a little bit of kind of rustic look to it, but still have it be, um, delicate isn't the right word, but I wanted it to have that kind of whimsy and um, formality, I don't know, the, the right word is escaping me, um, with the sweater. Um, so anyway, that's coming along. Right. So that's really it that's on the needles. I told you that I would be featuring a finished object and I'll be right So I have had this done for a while <laughs> and it is the Croft Who's Hat by Ella Gordon who is the patron designer for Shetland Wool Week this year. I knit this out of Star Croft Tide and I really like the way that this particular yarn performs as a color work yarn. And uh, I caveat almost all of my products that I make uh, with, you know, I don't really have a sensitivity to itch, and so I'm more than happy to wear this as a hat, um, a sweater, it doesn't bother me. It's, uh, it's a strong, it's got a strong feeling to it, but it certainly doesn't, um, you know, it's not like wearing Herdwick on your head or something like that. So um, just has a really nice uh, toothiness, grip to it, and it blooms beautifully. And I have been wearing this hat nonstop. I really like the way this hat fits my head. And I got to wear it on a canoe trip up to Cockmagomic Lake and doing some canoeing up there. Um, but unfortunately, this particular time of the year right now, um, it's been unseasonably warm. So I haven't been able to wear it uh, as much as I would like coming into fall. So anyway, finished. All right, acquisitions and discoveries. Well, first of all, I don't know if you've seen this, but I feel like it's my duty to let you know that the Netloft 
who always packages their items so beautifully. Um, I ordered three pin, four pins, and a fish a needle gauge for my husband. It's a salmon, and it arrived completely wrapped in tissue paper in this bag with a beautiful card, hand signed, and I, they just do a phenomenal job making you feel like a, you know special and you've gotten a treat. So I ordered these pins. They have a um, variety of them, and some of them were sold out. But I got the Fisher Lassie. Oh, come on, you turkey. Yes? So it is a pin of a Gansey, of a knit Gansey, and the top says Fisher Lassie, a Cordova, Alaska. And this was part of the Gansey project that uh, the Net Loft um, was engaged in after she returned from Shetland Wool Week. And they've just done a really phenomenal job with this concept and reflecting on it and promoting it and um, the yarns traditionally used with Gansies. So I picked up a couple of these Fisher Lassie pins. I got one with the same design on it for my husband that said working in wool. And then I got him the salmon um, needle gauge and it says follow the fish else but anyway I I would go take a look because these are pretty special and I love this knitted Gansey icon um, and I just love Fisher Lassie so go check them out on the net loft and they sent me this really fun pencil the quarter of a Gansey project working in wool and proud tradition of harvest heritage and hand knits the other thing that arrived in the mail which was a surprise, was from Lucky Pluck Farm. And she sent me, I think she's from Vermont, some really fun, fun package. I'm gonna just pull this out immediately. So there's a nice little card in here. Um, she, this is CVM um, from her flock, from her flock processed by another hand spinner. And the spindle you may have seen on Instagram, it is, it's our all-in-one tree of life spindle. So let's take a look at this. I don't know, maybe you follow Lucky Pluck on Instagram, but she had been posting these. I even got a little stitch marker. It's a little owl. But really, this is the fun part right here. Come on, this is so cool. So, I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. Oh, that's cool. It says Lucky Pluck on the bottom. But I will tell you it's nice and lightweight. And look at the beautiful yarn that's been spun on it already. So, and I am not an adept spindle spinner. So she has said that I can offer this as a prize, and I would love to do that. So I'm going to throw this into the FleeceWise um, event. Um, so if you're interested, you can participate in any of the threads that we are engaging in um, on any of those podcasts. Ask your questions, make your comments, etc. But um, it spins beautifully. It's a fun color, it's lightweight, it comes apart for travel, and it's sturdy. So it's not something that, you know, if you wanted to take along, you know, I'm thinking if you wanted to take to the island, um, you know, or some kind of rugged canoe trip, then you would not have to worry so much about, you know, things getting crushed. Um, and I bet it even floats. So thank you so much. Um, Lucky Pluck, and I'll put the links in um, um, in the show notes. But I will show you some other things she sent. So I got the stitch markers, so that's tons of fun. 
and I got some fiber. It's just, just fun to play with. Do you hear my sheep in the background? My little... They are a little bit sassy. I will have to say that. One of them actually is named Sassy. I made the mistake. Well, it wasn't the mistake, but uh, my nephew really loves the sheep and the horses at my parents. And so when I got the, um, I got four lambs, I named two of them. Um, I have Ruby and Pearl and my mom named one uh, that we're getting. She was thrown in as kind of a bonus. She is, she's not really a lamb that was thriving and didn't, hadn't really done well, but so we're taking her and my mom has named her Fern and we offered the other um, ewe lamb to my nephew to name and, um, and so we were all wondering what he was going to name his first sheep and he named it Dory. So we have Ruby, Pearl, Fern, and Dory. Seems appropriate though. So here's some beautiful CVM from Vermont. A beautiful natural shade of brown and the gray I swear to God, I just saw the gray. Maybe I put it down. Um, but we've got some gray. Here it is. They're beautiful, little hand prepped. Ness. So anyway, thank you so much for thinking of me. Um, I look forward to um, sending that along. I know I'm not very good at that, sending out prizes and my Bella socks. Uh, but I am looking forward for that, finding a home and having some adventures of its own. The last thing I'm going to talk about today in Acquisitions and Discoveries was a pretty spectacular Shackleton um, and a pretty spectacular gift. I, I'm having a hard time articulating my thoughts and feelings about this. There were a group of knitters and spinners and crew members from the Shackleton along that Emily of Fibertown uh, rallied and had the inspiration to pull into her own Shackleton project, which ended up being for me. And well, I'm just, I'll just show it to you because I don't have the words to talk about how um, how important the, this is. So anyway, um, it's a blanket <laughs> and it is made up of squares. People have knit and hand spun or knit soulful stash, place-based yarns, people stash, elements from their own Shackleton, um, and coordinated by Emily, and, and then um, put together by Emily. So uh, people were asked to send a specific square, right? You know the drill. You'll note that I have not taken <laughs> the labels off <laughs> yet. And so, also beautiful. And thank you. You know who you are um, for your time and your effort and your continued participation in the podcast and in the project. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chart the blanket. And then I'm going to correlate the cards and the labels and um, to the chart so that I can uh, be sure to remember and revisit often um, these amazing um, words and just connect. I've used that word quite a bit. Have I? Have I used that word quite a bit? Anyway. I've already used this. I know I should take the labels off and because um, we've had a few cool mornings at my parents, but I'm kind of like, I know it's a blanket, but really um, I can totally drive in my car with this on, right? Um, the only thing I'm fearful about is getting dog hair on it, which is 
basically my fundamental fear of everything that I make, um, which um, is, I guess it's okay, right? Dog hair is okay. So, events and, yeah, events. It doesn't have an and. Um, I will be attending the Maine Organic Farmers and Gardeners Association Fair, MOFCA. Anyway, it's called Common Ground. And I will be volunteering at the Spinning Tent with the Wednesday Spinners, a longtime spinning group in the state of Maine. I will be there on Friday. And if you're coming, great. I'd love to see you. Common Ground does have a, a fleece tent and a fiber center. All of the products that are at the Common Ground Fair, I think, have to have like a 90% or 95% origin in Maine. It's a really unique place to be. And... I will be reporting back to you on that in FleeceWise because I will be talking a little bit about, you know, rolling fleeces, skirting fleeces, prepping fleeces for purchases for purchase by hand spinners, and um, and talking to some producers of hand spinning fleeces. So stay tuned for that. I will also be attending Rhinebeck, and I never get the weekend right. I think it's the second weekend in October. I don't know, somewhere on the 17th in there, if you're going to be there. I plan on heading over to the podcaster meetup, and I will be there on Saturday and I think Sunday. So hopefully you will see me there. And last but not least, I will also be at Highlands on the Fly. So I'm coordinating that Highlands on the Fly again. Um, we're invite, we are hosting Mary Jane Mucklestone for an evening talk. We have an amazing vendor fair, amazing food, the mountain, just the the space is uh, pretty fantastic. Um, the cabins are gorgeous and they're uh, mostly modern. You know, they have all the modern amenities and um, there's still space available if you are interested in coming and up to the north. I, again, appreciate you tuning in to the podcast. If you are interested in my sewing, you can find me at Clementine Made Me Do It. It's its own YouTube channel now. I will also be posting that same vlog here. It will come up as Sewing Vlog 2, Clementine Made Me Do It. And you can find me on Instagram as Fibertrek at fibertrek.wordpress.com. And yeah, I'm always forgetting my tagline, but I think it's wherever your fiber trucks may take you. May you return home safe with lots of fiber. Is that right? Oh, God, Corey, I never get it right. I'll see you next time. Bye. Fiber Trek was kindly sponsored by The Woolly Thistle. The Woolly Thistle is an online yarn shop owned and operated by Claire of the New Hampshire Knits Podcast. The Woolly Thistle proudly offers the best of British yarns, including Blacker, Eden Cottage Yarn, and West Yorkshire Spinners. Selected by Blacker to stock Cornish Tin 2 here in the USA, the Woolly Thistle will have Cornish Tin 2 available in all shades in both fingering and DK weight. Keep up to date with the Woolly Thistle on Instagram at the Woolly Thistle and at the shop thewoollythistle.com. Wow.